Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, July 28th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Yesterday, I talked about Apple releasing a patch for a CVE 2021-3087. That particular vulnerability affected iOS as well as Mac OS. Now, whenever Apple releases patches, the description is very brief. It's usually literally a sentence, but it also mentioned that the vulnerability had already been exploited in the wild. So today we got a blog post by a security researcher, Sar Amar, with great detail about this particular vulnerability. Now, if you wonder how SAR was able so quickly to figure all of this out, apparently SAR already had it figured out back in March. And as proof that uh, this is something that SAR was working on back then, SAR actually tweeted an, a hash of a file that uh, they now uh, posted on the blog post and it has sort of a quick outline of what happened with this vulnerability. So while SAR uh, was able to find a vulnerability, at the time SAR didn't have time to actually uh, develop a proof of concept exploit, uh, was going to do that later. And now of course they saw that this vulnerability had been patched and that's why SAR published a blog post with quite a bit of detail, proof of concept code and such, how to exploit this vulnerability. But the most uh, dangerous way how this could be exploited is as an attack against uh, the web browser. So something posted on a website uh, could essentially trigger this vulnerability in unpatched versions of iOS and Mac OS. And now with all of this detail out there, of course, an exploit will likely uh, be public and more accessible soon. So this has now really become a patch now vulnerability. Apply uh, this iOS and Mac OS patch that was released on Monday. And then we got two interesting vulnerabilities in Simpra. If you're not familiar with Simpra, it's an open source webmail client. So if you aren't into cloud and you would like to run things on premise, then Simpra is a fairly good option for you. But if you do use Simpra, then please patch. The first vulnerability here is a DOM-based cross-site scripting vulnerability. Now, one of the hardest web applications to write when it comes to cross-site scripting is a webmail client because a lot of email these days, of course, includes HTML. So you have to figure out how to render the HTML of the email inside the HTML-based webmail application. And of course, as part of this, webmail clients uh, will uh, sanitize the HTML and also alter tags in order to make them less dangerous. And that's exactly what Simpra did here. If an email included a form tag without an action, which would allow an attacker, for example, to trigger a form submission to the Simpra client itself, then Simpra would add an action in order to render the form harmless. But the problem here was that form tags were altered even if they were inside an attribute, and that would then expose other scripts. Reminds me a little bit of uh, Yahoo Mail across that scripting uh, vulnerability from a few years back where similar things happened like with uh, Boolean attributes that Yahoo uh, removed if they were not standard compliant. And the second one is a good old server-side request forgery vulnerability. This one comes as part of the WebEx integration. Now, this integration sets up a little proxy in order uh, to work around some same origin issues. It does make sure that the URL does match the WebEx.com pattern, but uh, then it does follow redirects. So an attacker could then redirect a victim back to an arbitrary URL uh, bypassing this filter. Together, these two vulnerabilities could be used to completely take over Simpra, at the very least uh, send email, for example, on the user's uh, behalf. 
Yes, our evil may be gone for now, but there is still plenty of ransomware around. The latest update comes from Lockbit, Lockbit version 2.0. Well, uh, they finally learned some Windows admin tricks and are using uh, crew policies in order uh, to disable a Windows Defender across a network. They also now send ransom notes to printers. I guess that's helpful if you have systems around that nobody's really using that are encrypted so that way you still see the ransom note and for Microsoft Teams users, uh, Microsoft now extended its SafeLink uh, feature to Microsoft Teams. So what this means is that links will automatically be wrapped. So if you click on it, you will first be directed to a Microsoft page. The destination will be scanned for malicious content before you are being directed to that link. Well, and is it for uh, today? Just a little bit of clarification uh, to the contest for August. So basically, you know, whoever guesses the closest location uh, where I will be in uh, the next month in August, I will be at a couple different locations. So any one of those locations will count and easiest to submit uh, any answers via the comment page on the website, use a subject, something like uh, August uh, Raspberry Pi contest. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.